Hey, it's Joe Lyons, and uh, this version of uh, what I automated this week, um, I'm going to cover some of the stuff. I picked up a, a web scraping job um, extracting data out of LexisNexis, and uh, it um, it would have been a ridiculously laborious process to do what the, the person wanted to do. Um, they provided me with, um, I thought I just, oh, there it is. I don't know why this is in between here. Let me close that and close this one. Um, they provided me with this list of counties, um, with a common limit in, uh, in the state, you know, that they wanted to, to go over. And there's basically, it, it should be virtually every county in the U S which is over 3000. And then they, they're <clears throat> extracting lean data, um, from LexisNexis and, um, let's see, let me add a little more definition to it. So, so also you can only export up to like a thousand at a time. And some of these counties have a really high population and some of them don't. And so he also wants to go back three years. And so um, in order to, to do that, the, the number of records that come up off, like with Los Angeles County, there's over 10 million people in it versus some of these other ones, there's virtually, you know, very, very few. And so I thought, hey, at first I thought, let's, um, why don't we do a better job of guessing the, the time span by bringing in the population for the county? And so I went to the Census Bureau and I found a really quickly found a, the, the estimated population for 2017, I think it was, for each county. Um, and it would, it would um, help us decide how long of a time frame, you know, is the right distance to do. Um, we actually went on a different route. I'll explain that here in a bit, at least topically. But um, I, so first I had to merge my file with his file. And so I came over here into a uh, hotkey. Let me see my 22 files. Um, and let's see, is that running? Yes. So I first read in the first file, store it in var. And then I, I created an, uh, an ob, this doesn't have to be global, but um, I had it in my, it was in my template. So anyway, that's what I default set it to. And then I loop over the object, I'm sorry, the, the, the variable um, var, just um, stir splitting it on the line breaks. And so each one of these gets put in and I put it in as a key into Kelly, just to remind me of which, which one it is, is the source, initial source for my client um, object. And I store the name um, it's the, both the concatenation of the name and the state because the, they have to be together. Otherwise, there's a, there's a ton of counties that overlap um, across different states. So you have to have the, the county and the state together. Um, and I give it a value of one just so we have a placeholder to So we put them all in the keys in this object. And if we want to look at it, um, let me see my dump object here. And let's... So I'm going to run this and you'll see here, this is, this is that Kelly object with all of the, those counties uh, as a key. It looks like maybe there was a blank one at the top, which it doesn't really matter. Uh, but, um, so there's all of the, the keys in there. Um, so each one's the key with a value of one, right? Um, so that was the first one. And then let me get rid of these two. And these two, because the next part is the, the sim, very similar process. It's, it's virtually identical. Um, the only difference is that I, I um, put the value of the, the population as the value instead of um, a one. So I read in my Joe variable list. And let me go ahead. And, actually, I don't have to highlight those. I always, I always like to. But, um, so I'm going to put this down below. It looks like I actually already had that right there as an example. But anyway... Um, whoa, and something really went wrong here, didn't it? Let's try this again. Oh, I grabbed the wrong rows. And I still grabbed the wrong rows. Come on. Here we go. And again, I can get, this is nothing. Um, so I read it into var, because I'm just going to reuse var. It completely overwrites it. It doesn't leave what was there before. Um, and I create a Joe variable. I'm uh, sorry, object. And then I used to split. Now notice the difference here. Um, I, I split on tabs because my file here is tab delimited. Um, I thought I had do white space on. So you can see these are tabs separating the, the county, comma, state, 
variable and then the tab and then there's the population of that state. I'm sorry, of the county. And so I dump that into an object and let's let's look at that object. So that's Joe, right? I'm gonna reload, run. And here now you'll see there's each of the county, county comma state with uh, the population values for that one. Um, let's see here, just so you get an idea of the scale. There, somewhere in here was Los Angeles. There we go, Los Angeles. So look at how much larger that is than a lot of the others, right? I mean, it's it's ginormous. Um, so anyway, and then I need to, of course, merge these two. And so I'm going to skip this part right now here for now. Um, so I basically iterate over the Joe object and say, you know, so this is the key value, right? A key is A and B is the value. And I say, hey, if in the Kelly object, my A in Joe, because this is iterating over Joe, is a key, then go ahead and set the the um, the Kelly objects where that index is the, you know, the, the county state combination to the value of B, what was in Joe, right? So this is where I'm, I'm merging the two. I'm taking... I'm using the index of the things in Kelly and then setting the value in Kelly to what was the value in Joe, right? So here's where I'm merging the two together. Um, very simple, very straightforward. And let me comment these two out. And when I run this, um, we're actually notice we're going over the Kelly object. Um, let me add a return here just so it doesn't go forward. I'll explain that next slide in a second. And so now you'll see here are, it looks the same, right? Because there's a lot of the same content, but um, somewhere in here, you'll see some that actually didn't merge and there'll be a one. Let's see if we can spot one. There's not many. Um, after a little bit of cleaning, I looked at some of the patterns and stuff and, uh, oh, I just saw one. Um, so here's here are a couple that didn't match. La Porte County, Indiana, and another one, La, La, La Salle Parish, Louisiana. Um, and that's what this next part does is, is this says, Hey, if, um, if B equals one in Kelly, let's add it, append it to a list. Um, I could have dumped it into another object or something, but then I'm going to, I'm going to view that. So if I rerun this here, are that looks like 21 counties that for whatever reason didn't match up. Well, out of over 3000, 20 didn't match. You know what? That's good enough for me. Um, so so that was how that worked. Now, what I want to point out is a goof I did because I was I did this and everything worked worked fine, um, although it was a little slow. And so I was, uh, Maester was helping me with the the other program, and and he's like, okay, we need to merge us. I said, oh, actually, I already did that, and I showed him. I said it took me about five minutes to write this, uh, maybe ten. And I said I was you know happy with myself that I'm I'm starting to get stuff, and he he's like, you know, yeah, it works, but it it takes a while, um, and so we were looking at it. And actually, let me see here, shift F1, so it gets rid of that. Um, unfortunately, I had changed the name, so um, uh, this is old. So let's see, this should be, uh, actually, sorry, that is right. That should be Joe. Um, actually, key value doesn't matter. Oh, oh, but this one does. So this is if A, no. Oh, that is right, key, because that's the, that's the K up here. If K equals A, um, then... Anyway, I was looping over it twice. Um, I didn't need this outside for loop uh, because basically, and, and Maestria taught me this probably like a year ago, um, by setting the key as the unique ID, I don't need to go check each one of them because I just check if it exists and that helps me prevent having to loop over both files separately. I was looping over one and in each row I was checking, hey, is this, you know, um, is this key, or I shouldn't say that because because when I wrote it, I was saying, is is this value here in the other file, and then going over the next one, is this value here in the other file, and but looping over each one of them, and I didn't have to do that. All I had to do was say, is this key present in that object, um, and so I don't have to iterate over it. So anyway, this this was um, bad, not bad, just not optimized code. It worked, which is what threw me, cause, um, but it it still this was lightning fast. The other one took like three seconds and this one you blink and it's done. So, um, so anyway, so that's the merging of files I did. 
And then let me go ahead and close this because I won't get confused. Um, the other one I wanted to mention was I'm trying to look for it here, waiting for element to exist. So this it's out of context because I'm not sharing the actual stuff. But um, on the page loads on the the script, um, it would I had to wait. I would hit search. And then it would it would put up like a little timer, and then it would come up and say, okay, here's you know maybe the download button or whatever. Um, and so what I wanted to build in, of course, was an automated way not to be checking the page and not to be um, having to I'm sorry, not to set a timer for it to say, well, let's wait three seconds and hope it's done, right? Or let's wait one second and hope it's done, and then there'd be issues, right? So I wanted a a way to say, hey, when is you know let's let's wait for that presence of the download button. Um, which is this up here, um, to exist and then go ahead and once it exists, then we'll click it. Well, the problem was on that website that this actually it's, this is where it was really problematic was, um, you hit the search button and right after uh, like about a second and a half, maybe it's not that long, a second after you hit the search button, the element exists. So it didn't exist before. Um, but when you hit search, then Almost instantly right after that, it exists. However, it's not visible. And so there's the search window and it's doing the search, but it actually exists. And so my script kept breaking because it kept going through. So I had to figure out a way to say, well, how do we make sure it's not actually visible, even though it exists? And so this, this I've seen a lot of posts in the forum of people saying, how do I wait for something to exist? And and I think um, often this is this is part of the hangup of is HTML, um, let me go back to the initial page. Well, whatever. But it um, it can exist without being visible. And so um, the first step of this is I first check to see if if this, if a pointer to the thing I'm trying to look at, so this part, um, first wait for it to exist. If it doesn't exist, it's going to sleep here and wait and wait and wait. Once it does exist, it stores it in this variable. Um, and then I pass it to a function just because I want to have something I can repurpose for later uses. And... It, um, so it jumps into here and says, hey, if first off, if this isn't doesn't exist, so I just built this as a safety check, just throw up a message box saying you need to make sure you know the thing exists first before you jump in here. Um, I tried actually building this where this was inside the function, but the problem is you can't pass something to inside here that doesn't exist yet. And so it has to exist before you can, you know, push to push it to something inside of a function because otherwise there was nothing there. Um, so maybe I'll still find a workaround for that of just passing the path, this, this text to here, and then I can have it in there. But, um, as an object, it has to be something when you pass it to here for it to work. So anyway, um, but the next one, this is what I, I, I read up on and, and finally found a way to do it is you can check for that element for what this thing is pointing to, to see if the width, if the offset width is zero and the offset height is zero, then that means it's not visible. And so, um, every element, I believe every element has like this, this value you can check. And if that value is set to zero on both, then it doesn't, it's not visible. And then you can go ahead and just wait for it to, to change. So I, I, this, this little thing here just says, basically, if they're both equal to zero, just sleep until one of them doesn't, and then it would move forward. So that was, that was my one for waiting for an element to be visible, um, and exist. So they're tied together. Uh, but, um, the next one, which I'm going to brush over just real quickly here was, um, we were, Mace Rith was talking through, we were, we were looking at, um, some of the data results that come back from the, the data from LexisNexis and they had, um, multiple commas in a line and it basically were like, well, what if there was more than one comma in the line? So what if usually there's, let's just, actually, let's go back to the state example of this. I can explain it here. So let's, there, there weren't in this case, there weren't any counties that had a comma in their name, but what if there were, right? This would have been problematic because some, I, I hate comma delimited files in the first place, right? So I always try to use tab, but, um, Let's say that, that this was Otaga, comma, County, Alabama, right? So um, since we do know there are no commas in state names, right, we could have said, well, you know, we can't just grab the first comma and split it, right? What if we had to grab, because um, this case, everything else would work, but this one would have broken, right? So what, what we could do, though, is say grab the last comma, 
um, and grab, you know, the, from the last comma over and split on that. And so I, um, I mentioned to him like, yeah, I can, you know, I can get the count of all the commas and then go to this and, and makes just like, no, there's, you know, it's really easy. Let me show you. So, um, so he wrote some text here that basically says, so here's text with a bunch of commas in it. Right. Um, I'm, I've broken it down here to, um, simplify it a little for our purposes, for our, for our learnings. Um, but cause I don't really use in string much. I use it to see, Hey, is there's this text somewhere in the larger scope of things of the other text, but I don't really use it for doing how he did it here. So the very first one, I gotta kill my other script first. Hold on, exit. All right. Now I'm gonna launch this. When I run it, um, it says 31, right? And if we look up here, hopefully, I think it's down here somewhere. Um, column 40, that should have been, oh, because I see, because, um, because this is here. I wonder if I highlight this, if it'll, no, I'm still gonna say the column position. Uh, here we go. Count 31. So, um, it was giving me the column position, which was accurate, but the problem is I have this variable being defined here in the beginning. So um, that 31 was where that last comma was. Now, let me explain this, because this is something I didn't realize, and I was always jealous of Python having the ability to slice strings really well. Um, and and I, now that I, I, I learned this little tip, I'm like, you know, I, I really think it, it um, auto hiking might have the guts of what you really need to. Um, the big thing with this one that, that first threw me and then I finally realized, okay, this is what we're doing, is this parameter here, um, let's see if it'll highlight it. Usually it'll tell you wh where you are, but that is the, um, the, where to start. Um, let me, let me switch back. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me switch something else and come back and see if it'll, or I think if I can do update, refresh. Let's see if this gets it to start. Every once in a while, Studio just doesn't update stuff on the screen. There we go. So that's the starting position, right? So if, if this was a one, it would start at the first character. And I think if you leave it blank, it'll start at the first character also. But what I... Had, I, I think I actually remembered this, but I never really used it that way, was if you put a zero or a negative, it will start on the right and work your way backwards. And so by starting on the right, and then notice the next one is occurrence, right? So we come in here and this is the occurrence. So basically he's like, hey, start on the right and go back to the first instance, right, of what you're looking for. And so I'm looking for a comma. And so that's how that simple that was, right? So this would be really easy. So, um, so let me comment that out now. Then he put it into a substring and says, okay, um, let's get the, um, let's get everything and we're going to use, let me, let me comment that back out. So when I highlight this, oh, I thought it would note it here because, um, but I guess I changed it a little bit here. This is minus one. Um, oh, it's, it's right here. This is, this is what I borrowed from. There we go. Let it highlight it um, from up here. But then he's using it wrapped in a substring and saying, hey, start um, at the beginning and go up to wherever that is, minus one character, because I think we don't want the comma. So when I save this, actually, let's comment that out now and run it. It gets everything. So this is a lot string with a lot of, and then notice a lot of, and then that's where the last comma was, right? So I'm getting everything to the left of the first comma. That's what that minus one did. Um, if I took that out, it would leave the comma in there. Um, and then the next one, well, actually, we can just use his, what he has there. Um, it was getting, I think, the opposite. This is a string with a lot of commas. i trying to remember he added something in here. Substring, string. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Um, I think, oh, let's see, where is that? Boy, I'm not sure what, oh, wait, there's the substring. String position one, string comma, and then he's getting, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. It was just a bad coincidence of the line break um, where this was, and it threw me. Um, you know what? I'd rather um, not do this in his function to help explain it because um, he actually had two things here using his function, right? 
So it looks like my, <laughs> wow, where's my caps lock on? There we go. So there were two things there. So let me get rid of this one now. Oh, hey. So the first one is similar to up above. Um, it's just in one line. So when we run it, it's, it's the first part. The second one, this is saying now get that plus two position and it's getting the second, the everything after, right? So he was leveraging his, which I love, his message box function, but I didn't realize that that commas was on the second line because it was the second parameter. It was this part of what he had um, wrapped up into here and then he was just using his function. But um, he was just demonstrating here now, go ahead and get um, that, that same thing plus two where that position was because we stored the position in POS and then we're adding two to it and get everything to the right. So anyway, um, I've been doing, let's see, I'm trying to think of anything else um, that I worked on that's easy to, to share. But um, I think that's the, the bulk of it. Um, that Lexus Nexus. So the other cool thing um, in that, in that, that Maestrith figured out, and this is where like his, his ability to loop over things is really interest, uh, amazing. And, what we did was we said, hey, because we're going over a three-year period, and some of these counties, a lot of them, like one pull, because there's less than a 1,000 records, can get the whole three-year period. So we start off at the three-year period, and then if it's if it's too many records, then we cut it in half, and then if that's too many records, we cut it in half, and it just keeps going until there's enough. And some, actually like Los Angeles County, some of them, even one day was, was too many records, so we're going to have to figure out a different approach for that. But... um. Then after it, it gets the successful, like, let's say you went down to, from the, the three years down to, let's say it got down to a week, seven days. Um, when it pulls the seven days and it, and it, and it gets the data, then it actually nudges up 50%. And so that would be like, let's say 10 days or maybe it's 11 days, um, it rounds, but, um, and, and it keeps trying to increase it back because what we noticed was the data kind of goes like this and we didn't want to dial it all the way back down and then not realize we could try to inch it up some. And so it's, it's, it's kind of a, you know, um, uh, AI type, you know, algorithm where it's, it's learning, or at least it's adjusting to the data and trying to do a better job of, of pulling more data. So, um, I, I was really happy with, with that. we got a few other things to finish with it, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Anyway, hope you guys are doing well and see you soon. Bye.